Hi and welcome to module 7 where I'm going to be talking you through all the global settings and options available in Silent One. Uh, there's not too much to discuss first here so let's get stuck in straight away. The first thing I should probably point out are the options available on the actual keyboard itself. The most common ones are the three controls to the left of the keys down here being the modulation wheel that I covered in the last module which allows you to assign certain modulations to, for example the filter cutoff or the LFO rate. To the left of the modulation wheel is the pitch bend wheel. This is fairly obvious in itself as it bends the pitch, but next to the wheel is the control for setting how much range the pitch bend wheel is given. At the moment and by default it's set to three semitones, but we can adjust this amount by dragging the number up or down to a range of 24 semitones which is plus minus two octaves. Now to the right hand side of the keys you'll find the settings for the glide options. First of all these options are best used when the mono legato button here is activated which will light up. When this is activated only one key note can be heard at a time so if I were to hold down the C note and then press the C above it only the latest note will be heard like this. Now by adjusting the portamento dial below, we can adjust the time it takes for the tone to move from the first note to the next, so let's dial it up to 50% and now it should sound like this. Now you can hear the tone glides from one note to the other smoothly. However, this only happens when there is no gap between the two notes. If I want the synth to always do this regardless of there being a gap or not between the notes, the switch to the right of this needs to be in the S position like this, so that now the notes will always glide from the previous to the next like this. Moving up to the very top of the synth, you'll find some more global settings. Starting on the left we have the polyphony. This is to control how many notes can be pressed at the same time, and by default this is set to 3, just to save on computer CPU levels. So if you are going to be writing a big thick chord phrase, then it's worth lifting this limit upwards. To the right of the polyphony you'll see a display showing the amount of oscillator voices that are being used, and the amount of potential ones to be used depending on the amount of voices you've given each oscillator and the setting of the polyphony. So if you have just one voice on one oscillator, but with a polyphony of 16, then your available voices are 16 too. However, if you change the oscillator voices up to 8, and then your total will be a possible of 128 voices. And 8 voices on all 4 oscillators with a polyphony of 16 will allow you to have a total of 512 voices playing simultaneously. To the right of the voices display, you can select part A or part B, and each have two oscillators inside, and to the right of that is a solo button, allowing you to solo whichever one is currently highlighted, part A or part B. Moving further along to the right, you'll see the sync button. This is highlighted by default, and it synchronizes the LFO and delay effects to the host tempo. So if you're using Ableton, Logic or Pro Tools, and your global tempo is set to 128 BPM, then Silent One will stay at 128 BPM too. Most software synthesizers, including Silent One, have preset MIDI CC controller commands assigned to each dial or slider. This is so that you can assign hardware or software controller devices to control particular aspects of the synth. For example, Let's say you know that you want to use Silent One in a live performance and that you know you always want to control the LFO gain on all of your patches. By assigning a MIDI controller to the LFO gain dial, you can always be sure to know exactly which dial to reach for when you're in your performance to adjust the LFO gain. Last but not least, it's always worth knowing that at the very top right hand side of the synth you'll find the reset all button and this is essentially a panic button for when you're playing with all the modulations and for some reason the synth starts to self-oscillate and cause a continuous tone of feedback. 
This is a really rare occurrence, but worth knowing as you start to use everything we've gone through so far. Now let's put all of that information together into a useful example to help clarify a few things, as it can be confusing figuring out the numbers of voices and polyphony, especially when you're using both parts to build your patch. Firstly, we'll look at how to make a monophonic patch using both parts A and B to create lots of width. I'm starting with the initialized patch once again. First, I'll choose the pulse wave for this example, so I'll select that waveform for oscillator 1 on layer A and I'll turn up the number of voices to 4. So now when I play a note you get four identical waveforms being produced with one oscillator like this. Now I'll set oscillator 2 to the same waveform and increase the number of voices to 4. So the sound is even bigger when I play a note, having eight voices in total which sounds like this. I'll have to bring down the level of part A in the mixer section now so that the output doesn't clip and also I'll increase the semitone value of oscillator 2 by 4 so it makes an edgy minor third interval like this. Now switching to part B at the top I can use the two oscillators in that section there to add more sounds to our patch. What I'm going to do in this case is to create an exact replica of part A and I'll show you why in a moment. The easiest way to do this is to go back to part A and then hit the C or copy switch in the top right of oscillator 1 and then go back to part B and hit the P or paste switch in the corner of oscillator 1 and then repeat the process for oscillator 2. and I'll also need to bring the level of part B down in the mixer section so it's the same as part A. This means when I play a single note now we get 8 voices coming from part A and another 8 from part B, so 16 in total creating a big sound like this. I could have produced the same result however by simply having 8 voices in both oscillator sections in part A without having to use part B at all. The reason for using part B though was to create a cool stereo effect with an LFO. So what I'm going to do now is to pan both oscillators in part B to the right and then pan both oscillators in part A to the left. Then I'll need to bring the main volume of the patch down a bit so it doesn't clip. Then when I play a note we'll get part A on the left side and part B on the right, which you can hear if I use the solo switch now. Now, I'll set up some modulation. I'm going to have an LFO modulating the phase amount of the pulses, which can create an effect a bit like vibrato as the waveform phase modulates up and down. So, I'll choose phase A in the first modulation box for LFO1, and set the amount all the way up in a positive direction. Then I'll set the gain of the LFO up to max and the rate up halfway. Then if I solo part A we'll be able to hear the effect. It'll only be on the left channel don't forget. So we'll hear the phase modulating up and down at a medium rate like this. I'm going to decrease the amount of modulation now though as I don't want the effect to be quite that large. I can do this either by bringing the LFO gain down or the modulation amount dial. I'll use the modulation amount dial for reasons that will become clear later on. Now if I bring part B back in by unsoloing part A I can apply the same phase modulation to part B by choosing phase B in the second LFO1 target parameter box. If I set the modulation amount to exactly the same as part A now, then they'll both be modulating up and down in unison, which will sound like this. However, what I actually want to do is to modulate the parts in opposite directions, which will create a cool stereo effect, 
and is the reason why I wanted to use both parts for this patch. So, have a listen now to what happens when I rotate phase B's modulation amount dial across to the same amount but in a negative direction. I'm going to set up the mod wheel to control this LFO modulation now, so I'll choose it as the source in miscellaneous 1. And then I'll choose LFO1 gain below and turn up the amount a little with the dial alongside. Then, when I play a sound, you can hear when the mod wheel goes up and down, it brings the stereo phasing effect in and out, like this. A few other changes I'm going to make are to add some portamento so that the pitch slides around. I'll set it to a little over halfway and then I'll bring the polyphony amount down. At the moment it's set to 3, which means that 3 notes can be played at once, which will produce a total of 48 voices, spread across 6 different pitches. This is too many and will make the patch messy, so I'll bring it down to 2, which will only allow 2 notes to be played at once, with a total of 32 voices, which will also be better on the CPU. I quite like the sound when I play and hold a note and then add another note a fifth up, so you get the two higher pitches being added to the two already sounding, with a nice slide up to them at the start, like this. I've actually adjusted the amplitude envelope on the patch now, which I did by tweaking part A and then copying and pasting over to part B, so now the sound has a bit of a fade in followed by a slightly longer fade out when I play a note to create more of a pad or gentle lead effect. I've also added some chorus in the effects section too. Here's what the end result sounds like. So that pretty much completes the overview of everything Silent One has to offer now. In the next couple of sessions I'm going to be going through putting all of these into good use and creating a base patch and a lead patch respectively. So I'll see you there.